My name is Brittany Habib. Thank you guys so much for watching my black gymnastics journey, what I had to endure. We are in 2005. Uh, quick recap, I had made top 10. Canada denied me the chance to try out for the Olympics. Next up was traveling internationally. I got my first international competition at the American Cup. Um, my coach making me feel not worthy. And then going to Slovenia and Luxembourg and not have my coach travel with me and have to go through <laughs> a flight of death. The majority of people that was on that flight canceled the return flight because they were too scared to fly back. Hopefully <laughs> they've got places to stay in Europe, in Slovenia, but there was many people who had absolutely canceled their flight and was not willing to get back on a plane. That's how terrifying it was. So an incident that comes to mind, you know, I'm getting better now. So sometimes I get to, I get to pick the good beans. <laughs> sometimes um, my teammate always gets the first choice, but you know, if she's not there or if she allows me, I get to choose which beam I'd like to use now. And we're getting ready for a competition. It wasn't a big competition. It was, you know, just a local competition. I don't remember which one. Remember we were both training on beam and um, she fell, but she fell really bad. She, she did something wrong. She slipped off the beam and she felt, she felt bad, meaning her finger was broken. Like her finger was, I don't know if it was sticking out to the side, but something happened. Her finger was really, really bad broken. So she's on the floor and she's crying. And I'm like, beside, I'm looking down and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, are you okay? And like, I don't know what to do, you know? But before I could even get down and off the beam, Yelena is sprinting. I don't even know how she knew about it because I think she was in, I don't even know how she knew about it because I knew she was in her office and she was on the phone or something like this. Intuition, when you love someone, this is what I keep talking about. When you love someone, you feel it, you get it. So out of nowhere, before I could even get off the beam, Yelena's running, she's sprinting, she goes onto the floor, she cuddles her, she's holding her, she's kissing her. Oh, and she's holding her and she's rocking her and Elena is crying. When I talk about tears, like <laughs> the girl is sitting there crying, Elena's sitting there crying, and they're both holding her finger and, and everyone's just crying and I'm like traumatized. I'm like, oh my goodness, like I don't even know what to do. I'm not gonna get close because you know when you see a mother and a child together, you don't wanna interrupt that and she loves, this is another one of the girls that she loves. So they're both crying. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So they end up rushing to the hospital. Um, and yes, Elena does go with her. Uh, remember, it's a broken finger. I'm not trying to say it's, you know, something small, but it is a broken finger. Well, what can we do for a broken finger? And I'm saying it like this because I have my own story coming up. Elena goes with her to the, the emergency hospital. I'm still standing on that beam. Keep, please keep in mind, there's no coach there for me right now. <laughs> So I'm sitting on this beam and I'm like, okay, uh, I feel bad, I'm terrified, I'm scared, uh, but I still have to continue training and there was no discussion like, okay, Brittany, you work on this, da, da, da. like she was just out the door because she doesn't care about me. <laughs> so they go, all go to the hospital together. I'm pretty sure Valeria was still there, but he's on bar, so I'm on beam by myself. So I like try my best to continue my, my program and like, you know, I'm concerned. That was my best friend. So I was definitely concerned for her and, um, you know, I felt bad. It was just the finger. It comes back, her finger's in a splint. She obviously is unable to compete. Um, Elena is extremely disappointed. And Elena also doesn't know that my best friend um, has spoken to me about wanting to quit gymnastics. And um, she's serious about this. She was just one year younger than me but um, a serious rock star, like I keep saying it, uh, absolutely talented. Um, so then it comes to the point, maybe she gets back from the finger, I don't know. He actually tells Elaine, you know what, I'm done with gymnastics. I'm quitting, you know, <laughs> I love, I love white people. <laughs> they have their voice, no, I don't like it anymore. I'm just, I'm not doing it anymore. Elena starts 
crying. Like when I talk about tears, when I talk about, please, let's think about it, hugging her, kissing her, kissing her all over. Elena loved her so much that she had all these strings because she had to get the head coach of Canada, Andre, to come to our gym <laughs> to have a private meeting to try to talk this young lady out of quitting gymnastics. And Elena is just crying every, every day. <laughs> you know, there's just this tears, there's just a sadness, like she couldn't even really coach that much because of the hurt. My teammate was not having it. She's like, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not doing it. You know, even her dad was there. Um, I, I really want to show this emotional side of Yelena because she is this tough Russian coach with this harshness and this, you know, do, do, do. I get it, but I'm showing you that there is a soft side to her. Um, another one of her very beautiful, uh, uh, favorite, talented gymnasts, which was maybe two or three years younger than me, uh, an amazing up and coming as well. Her, her mother found out that um, she had cancer and a very hard news to swallow. I remember Yelena crying and picking her up like a baby and holding her and kissing her and holding her and kissing her, you know, just, just consoling her. Another teammate um, didn't feel like she was pretty. You know, you're going through that awkward stage. You know, you got the braces, you got the this, you know, there's the awkward stage, you all go through it. <laughs> And she just didn't, and I just remember Yelena consoling her. And this is, these are three separate athletes that I'm talking about, showing the side of Yelena of love, of comfort, of mother-daughter relationship, kissing each girl, holding each girl, wiping down their tears, just being that mother for them. Um, and when I talk about what I longed for from her, it was because I knew she had it. It was because I knew she had it, but she just didn't like me enough to want to share this with me. So in 2005, um, because I'm showing such great results overseas, the point system is really starting to add up. And I end up qualifying to the Pan Am Championships in Brazil. Wow, I'm heading to Brazil. Oh my goodness. This stuff's kind of cool. Like traveling the world, you know, getting your new Leo Tard, you know, with the that's the Canadian flag, like right there, you know, Canadian flag represent. Oh my gosh, like exciting, you know. So this is so cool. I'm heading to Brazil and um My coach is there, you know, the big competitions, <laughs> the ones where it, it looks good if she's there, she's there. Um, and I also think that they probably needed her to judge too. She's one of the highest level judges, so she really had to go. Um, so we head to Brazil and this is a long ass flight, okay? So we get off and Brittany, <laughs> Brittany having to be Brittany, um, as soon as I get off that flight, Elena's like, we go straight to gym, gym, straight to gym. I know you're going to feel jet lag, but we need to work that off. You need to be tired so you can have good night rest before podium training. So like, I'm like, I get it, but man, I'm tired. And because she made that statement, all the other coaches were like, oh yeah, yeah, my, my, my girl too, my girl too. We were going to the gym too. But those other athletes went to the gym and they were literally just stretching, you know, just splits, kind of some, you know, body tensors on the floor. But Brittany had to actually put in work. And that affected me. I'm like, yo, I'm tired too. Can I just stretch? Can I just do the tensor bandage? Can I just, can I, can I, can I? But of course I didn't have that voice to speak up. So, I end up having to do a lot more, <laughs> a lot more. And I see all my other teammates just sitting on the floor doing nothing while I'm on the podium, you know, sprinting and going through these, you know, walk through routines and testing out all the equipment and everything. And so my mind is not fully there. I'm tired and I'm like, why do I only have to always do things, you know? 
So I'm on my, I think I'm finished. You know, I head down and say, Elena, I did everything, you know, okay, you know, we're almost done. She's like, um, you need to feel vault more. Go back vault, feel vault, work on sprints, do some sprints. So I'm like, Shh. So I walk back over, my bad attitude. <laughs> And I go on to, um, you know, go on to the vault and I start doing some sprints. Now, in Brazil, the boards are a little bit different than here in Canada. In Canada, it's a flat board, a beat board. The bottom part is flat and then it's a regular beat board. In Brazil, <laughs> there's a tiny little hole, tiny, tiny, tiny little hole, and then the beat board continues. So I'm doing my sprints, you know, and I end up tripping over the Yurchenko mat, that little mat that goes before the beat board. I trip over that mat. I fly into the beat board, <laughs> right into that little freaking crack that can fit all of my fingers in, except my freaking pinky. And I'm going full force. So I fly in, my freaking pinky just freaking goes out to the side and I slide into that. Good thing I didn't hit my head on the vault because the board stomped me. I slowly pick up my hands and look at my fingers sticking out to the side, immediate black and blue, thick fingers sticking out to the side, purple. I'm holding my beautiful hand <laughs> and I slowly walk over because Elena's not even watching me. She just, she's over there with the coaches talking. So I walk over to her and I say, Elena, I think I hurt myself, <laughs> oh my gosh. And she looks at me and she goes, ah, oh, Britney, what are you doing? Why are you not thinking? Breathe, 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 oh. And then she goes like this, you know, that, that, fake, that fake love thing? Oh, Brits, I don't know why you're not thinking. What do you do? She picks my hand and looks at it and it looks as bad as shit. Looking at it, oh. <laughs> so I'm like, um, uh, I think uh, I just might need to get some ice. <laughs> you know, I'm not even, I'm not even thinking of anything. I'm just thinking of maybe I just need some help for my finger. That's all. I need some ice. No one's running to my rescue yet. I think I said maybe I just need some ice. Immediately, the Canadian Canadian committee finds me because they they hear and they see my big old purple and uh, finger pull me to the side or rather right in the middle of the rink and say um what are you gonna do are you planning to compete because uh you need to tell us right now i see your finger sticking out to the side i see that are you planning to compete because if you're not planning to compete we're sending you on a flight home tonight. So either you're competing or we're sending you home tonight. What is it that you wanna do? Confusion starts to rattle inside of me again. I keep using the word confusion because uh, I cannot, I'm trying not to swear on here. It wasn't even a thought for me to not compete. I just needed some therapy or some ice for my finger. And um, Fact of the matter was there was someone else at this competition who was also injured um, that did not get any ultimatum to either compete or go home. So again, I look at my poor hand, my finger sticking out, and I simply say, um, I would just like to get some therapy if that's okay, if we could just get some therapy on my finger. Also note that I, came to this competition and was not supposed to be competing bars. But someone got injured and that was an event that Brittany Habib had to pick up. And you know, anything that comes my way, I say, okay, I got it. I wasn't supposed to be competing bars. Um, but since somebody else got injured, I don't remember. It was the reason why I think they gave me that harsh ultimatum because I needed to pick up someone else's slack. Um, and if I wasn't going to be able to do that, I wasn't allowed on the premises. So I go and I get my therapy. 
from acupuncture and you know just trying to get the inflammation down kind of rubbing it out even though it hurts to touch we have podium training so i get to at least try what it's going to be like to use my hands on beam because i competed beam i competed vault i competed on bars and um you know it's hurting it's it's hurting it's hurting it's hurting but at least i have an idea of what my pain is going to be like for the big day I get to the big day, I do compete, I compete on bars, and please remember, bars is specifically using fingers to hold yourself onto that bar, and we're doing big gymnastics. This is the Pan Am Championships, okay? <laughs> That's the Pan Am Championships. If all of you guys know uh, Diane DeSantos, which it was like the biggest thing at the time, that's who I was competing against. <laughs> so bars is using my fingers the most, the beam is using my fingers the most, um, and, um, and I did it. I competed. Um, I did what I needed to do for my country. We um, got a bronze medal. And I think these ones like the nice real bronze medals, you know. I competed. I did what I needed to do at home. And spent some time to take care of my finger that was broken. <laughs> that was black and blue. And that was swollen the size of a huge sausage. What? I had to endure. If anybody wants to talk to me about, you know, she's just Russian, you know, she competed with a broken back, you know, this and this. She did all those things. Yes, she's Russian, but the beginning of my story showed you the love, the the energy, the the connection that she had to all of her other athletes that would have never been shared with me. And once again, <laughs> this was a big competition. It was a big competition and uh, the way that she reacted to my teammate who fell off the beam for a competition that coming up that was just a local competition, nothing, you know, representing Canada or anything like that. Um, the tears, you know, running to the hospital with her, all these different things. And poor Brittany had no one, no one there, no one. Yeah, my parents came to watch, but it's not like I called them crying saying, hey, I broke my freaking finger. You know, I also, you know, I want to also make my parents proud too. So I have to go and show the best I can with my poor broken fingers sticking out and, and just and keep it to me. And that's another thing, not even being allowed to talk about it because when the Canadian community came up to me, there was only an ultimatum. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, you hurt your finger, Brittany. You know, what can we do to help you? It was, we're sending you home or you're competing. What's the deal? In a, in a harsh tone like this. The mental <laughs> capacity, the mental strength, the pain tolerance, it was a difficult journey. I just kept pushing and I just kept moving because it was the only choice. It was the only choice I had. More to come, more to come. Thank you guys so much for watching.